Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Aquarium Online Academy, broadcasting from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. My name is Emily. I'm a member of our education team, and today I'm joined by Allie, who is behind the computer, so she's able to change all the images right behind me. And we also have James over at the questions computer. So we'd love to hear from you. If you're watching us live this morning, feel free to text us at this number below, 562-286-1838. We'd love to hear from you. So if I ask questions or if you have questions, you have observations you wanna share with us, let us know. Just remember that general texting uh, rates do apply. So make sure you ask your grown up before you text us. If you happen to be watching us maybe on YouTube or, or after we're not live, you can email us your questions at live at lbaop.org and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So that's live at lbaop.org. So that's if you're watching us on YouTube. All right, great. So let's get started today. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite, favorite, favorite groups of animals here at the aquarium. And I'll give you a hint. You can see them behind me. What do you notice? Let's take a look. Who is swimming in this exhibit here, in this habitat? Oh, I see them. They're all in a group up at the top. Do they look familiar to you? Yeah, they probably do, right? It's a group of penguins. Did you know that a group of penguins is actually called a waddle? Just like you talk about a flock of birds, it's a waddle of penguins. So we have a waddle of penguins here at the aquarium. Um, we have almost two dozen, 24 uh, birds. Actually, I think it's like 22 birds here on, in, our, uh, in our waddle. And this is a live webcam. You can see they're all just hanging out at the surface in the water. Some of them are swimming sideways. So take a look at what you notice about penguins. Is there anything interesting? What do their bodies look like? What colors do you notice? So take a moment right now, and we're gonna talk about the things that make penguins really special. And then we're gonna compare them to another type of bird here. All right, so we have the penguins up there. Do they remind you, does their body shape remind you of anything? Can you say it to, if there's somebody in the room or even your dog or cat or pet fishes in the room, can you? Can you tell them what shape is a penguin? Yeah, it kind of looks like a football to me. Does it look kind of like a football to you? Yeah, they've got this long football type shape of their body. And then they have a pretty like thick neck. And then you see this really solid head and a pretty good looking beak there. Now it doesn't look like a parrot beak. Uh, it doesn't look like a chicken beak. It looks, it, it actually has a really special beak, and that's because it turns out uh, your beak says a lot about what you eat when you're a bird. So let's take a closer look at the penguin beak. Maybe, Allie, can we see another picture of a couple of different kinds of penguins? And look, let's look at their beaks there. So what color do you notice? The beak is, is dark in color. Ooh, this one has a pretty color on it though. This is a different type of penguin. You can still see it's got that great football shape, makes them really good at swimming. So that's definitely a thing. Um, oh, and then you see these are emperor penguins. And so they have a black bill or beak. And then with that little orange stripe, it looks like somebody put like lip balm on them, except that they don't have lips. They're penguins, they have beaks. And so they have that bright little uh, bit of color they still got a really thick neck, really muscular football shaped body. You can see that they've got, oh, they even have like little feet, kind of like our other penguins that we saw. They've got really strong little feet that can stand on the ground. So they stand upright like that. Great observations. What colors did you notice on the penguins? Yeah, shout it out. Yeah, I noticed it too. They are black and white, and sometimes they have other colors on them too. So these emperor penguins have kind of like a little bit right under, sort of like right by their neck, they've got that beautiful orange and yellow spot. Their chicks don't look the same though. So these are baby penguins, and their chicks are fluffy and this grayish color. Um, they've got like, they're kind of like cartoonish looking to me. They're very, very cute. Um, they're super fluffy, and they have still that a black ring and they're, they're still like black and white and gray which I think is kind of neat and they still have that same body shape huh interesting 
they also have the same kind of beak. So I'm going to show you actually a model of a penguin skull. And we're going to see if we can figure out what do you think a penguin eats? Because remember, I said your beak says a lot about what you eat. So let's go over to my special camera over here. And this is a model of a penguin skull. Now, when I say model, it is actually made of plastic, okay? And this happens to be the skull model of the kind of penguin that we have here at the aquarium. So this is a Magellanic penguin. What do you notice about this skull? What colors do you see? It's really bright. Let me see if I can um, change the lighting. Just to, oh, there we go. Right there. So part of the skull is white, right? And part of it is really dark black. So the bill right here, this strong bill is really dark. And this is the size of the beak. It's about the length of, almost the length of my finger, like, eh, like two thirds of the length of my finger. So it's mostly like finger size. It does have an upper beak and a lower beak. What else do we notice about the skull? What part would this be, do you think? Now we're looking at the top of the penguin. What do you notice right here and here? What part of the body would that be on a penguin? Yeah, it's their eyes. So they actually have eyes right here. This is actually where their brain would be back here. So they actually have a pretty small little area for their brain. Um, and so this is their whole head. It's actually smaller than my hand for the Magellanic penguins. So this is the penguin uh, species that we have here. Now, if you had a beak like this, what kind of food might you eat? Do you think you'd eat really, really little food? Hmm. Maybe, we, could you eat fish with this kind of beak? Ooh, maybe, maybe you could eat small fish. Do you think this kind of beak would eat big fish, like a big old salmon or maybe a tuna? Oh, no, 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 that's too big. So we know that the, your type, the type of beak that you have says a lot about what you eat. So this uh, bird right here can eat small fish. So remember, the beak is about the size of my finger, and that means it can eat fish that are maybe a little bit bigger than my finger, but not too much bigger. And so they use their beaks to grab on to their food. So um, that's really neat. Good observations so far. Maybe let's go back and take a look at some of the Magellanic penguins um, that we have here at the aquarium. So this is an up close kind of what I think of as a keeper view. So imagine that you are a penguin keeper and you bring the bucket of food into the exhibit. Here's the bucket of food. And what do you notice is inside? There's fish, right? And so there's fish in this bucket. The penguins see you and they come to you to eat. And so now you're surrounded by penguins and they're ready to eat. So their bills are ready to go. And what they'll do is they'll open up their bills and you hand them their fish. And then they'll take it in their, their beak, hold on to it. And then they sort of, they, they'll sometimes like uh, chew on it just a little bit, but then they mostly swallow it whole. Can I tell you a secret about penguins? Sometimes our penguins are kind of picky about the way that they eat. So you have to make sure that as a keeper, you do the right thing. Some penguins like it head first, some like it sideways, like they want you to hand them the fish sideways. Some of them want it by the tail. They, they all have sort of different preferences. So really interesting. You have to be able to notice all the different behaviors, the things that they normally do. So a scientist, um, we have all these scientists on our staff who take care of our animals. And those are the types of things that they notice or observations that they make. So this is what it would look like. Now, take a look at these penguins. Remember, I said these are Magellanic penguins. They're about uh, maybe like a foot and a half tall or so. And uh, this is what they look like here. Now, they're, they are black and white like the other penguins we noticed. Do you notice any other markings on them? Take a look. Now, some of them are dirty right? So you see that some of them have a little bit of stuff on them. It's okay. It comes off after a while when they, they get back in the water. Do you notice though that they all kind of, it looks like they're wearing a tuxedo, right? But then it looks like they have another stripe on them. Yeah. So they're sort of like an upside down U on their bellies. And that's special for the Magellanic penguin, the adult Magellanic penguins. So all the birds that you see that have come up to eat the food that you're offering, they are all adult birds. They look a little bit different when, when they're born. So, um, so this is our waddle 
of Magellanics. And this is exactly what it would look like if you were, you were giving them their breakfast. Let's take a look at them inside their exhibit again and see if we notice anything else about them. So we're going to transition. Now, when we look at that live camera, take a look again. Remember, we've said a couple things about penguins. They all have that big football shape. They've got that strong muscular neck. They've got that black and white coloration. And let's take a look. Uh, oh, we, we talked about their beaks. But let's look at their, their wings. Hmm. Now, have you ever seen a penguin flying through the sky? No, they don't do that, right? But look at them right here. So they're floating around, and maybe if we watch them long enough, they'll dive down and start, um, start swimming. Look at how they actually move their wings here. So the thing is, they don't fly in the sky. They're not flapping like this. But look how they use their, their flip, flipper-like wings in the water. They sort of move them. They're really, really strong. What else do you notice? Do they use their back feet? Yeah, not very much. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit of kicking. Yeah, so they actually, they're really good at swimming underwater. I'm hoping that if we watch them for a few more minutes, they'll get going. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to text us here at 562-286-1838. We're observing penguins this morning. So take a look right here. Keep looking. Oh, yeah, one just went to the bathroom. I don't know if you noticed that. Now, their feet are also really interesting because their feet are different than a lot of other birds. Think, close your eyes and think of birds that you might have seen before. Ooh, I, I imagined a pigeon. Have you ever seen pigeon feet? They have really individual little toes, and their feet are maybe sometimes like reddish or pinkish, right? But penguin feet look a little bit different. And that's because penguins, when they're not swimming in the water like this or hanging out in the water, they can even stand on a rocky beach. And so, um, in fact, they'll stand in groups of like thousands and thousands. And so they have tough feet that allows them to stand on beaches uh, when they are out um, and they live on like rocky beaches. We actually provide rocks um, up in our exhibit uh, if you were to actually look inside the, the top view of our exhibit. They're not actually up there right now. All, almost all the birds are in the water, so we'll just keep an eye on them to see if they, they change their behavior. Oh, Kansha came in with a question. Kansha wants to know, do penguins eat shrimp? That's a great question. So not all penguins have that long bill. Remember, I showed you this model of, of a penguin um, skull. This is a Magellanic penguin skull, and these are fish eaters. But there are some penguins, like Adeli penguins, that actually eat much smaller things. Um, and so some penguins actually eat krill or shrimp-like animals. I'm so glad you knew that. So this is an Adelie penguin. This is one of the true Antarctic penguins. And um, they have a little beak. And so they eat the smaller krill that's out there. Uh, and the Antarctic penguins, actually almost all of them eat, um, their, the main part of their diet is going to be krill because there's lots and lots of krill there. It's just that the, the krill that are there in Antarctica are much bigger than the krill that we have here in California. But that is um, that is their teeny little beak. You can see it like head on right there. And look at those sturdy feet that I was talking about. Those are the kind of feet that are really good at standing on ground. So they do stand upright. They have tough little feet. Um, and so we actually spend a lot of time taking care of penguin feet here because it's so important to them. We want to make sure that their feet are nice and healthy. So that's, that's a lot of the, what's involved in penguin care. Now, Allie, can you actually show us um, by chance maybe a map of where penguins live? And let's see if we notice anything. Now, this is um, where you, this is a map of the world. I know it looks a little bit different because the colors are a little bit different, but the gray is the land. So do you see anything familiar? Yeah, so this is where we live in North America. And in fact, California is like, uh, let me see if I can point to it. Well, right there. Um, and then the white is the ocean here. So the, the colors are a little bit different on this map. And the blue part that you see here is actually the places where penguins live. And we're talking about all groups of penguins. Now, what do you notice? If the blue part is where penguins live, do you see any patterns? Is there anything kind of interesting to you? Hmm. The blue part is where all the penguins live. 
Now, the one that we just looked at that was really cute, the teeny little beak, the Adelie penguin, they live in the Antarctic, which is down here. And on this map, the Antarctic looks like stretched out. But normally when you look at a globe of Antarctica, it looks like a comma. It's like a big circle with like a little tail. Yeah, so that's what it looks like down there. But, oh, penguins only live in one part of our planet. That's a really interesting observation. Did you notice that too? Yeah, they only live on the bottom half of our planet. So you can imagine if the Earth wore a belt, it would be the equator, which is all the way right in the middle. And penguins only live below the equator. And that's because penguins, um, they evolved here and they are used to cold water. So as long as there's cold water, they don't need ice, but as long as there's cold water, they're good to go. So here at the aquarium, we keep our uh, exhibit cool enough, just like they would experience cold water or cooler water out in the ocean. So all penguins just need cold water. Oh, Cardin Academy of, of Maui? <gasps> welcome, wanted to know what is the penguin water temperature. So different penguins live in different water temperature. Um, so for example, the penguins that live off of Antarctica, they're actually used to the below freezing water temperatures there um, in Antarctica. Uh, but here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, our Magellanic penguins, maybe we can pop in and look at the exhibit again. Our Magellanic penguins, I believe they live, their water temperatures at about 60 degrees or so. That's, isn't that right? It's about there, um, which is a little bit colder than it is actually here in Southern California. But, um, but we keep it pretty cool in there. Uh, but otherwise, they don't need the air to be cold. They just like having cold water. And look at them. They're now diving through here. Do you notice the way that they're swimming? To me, it looks like they're flying underwater. They're actually pretty zippy. What else do you notice when they swim? Do you notice anything coming like behind them as they swim? Oh, I noticed bubbles. Check this out. Yeah, so they do have bubbles that come out as they, as they swim. Ooh, it looks like almost like a little waterfall of bubbles right behind them. That's interesting. I wonder where all that air is coming from. Hmm. Well, it doesn't actually come from inside of them because if you look, you can see the bubbles come off their backs too. So what are penguins covered with? Now, it's kind of hard to tell. When you look at them, they kind of look smooth almost, don't they? But if we look closer, they're actually covered with lots and lots of feathers. So many feathers that it almost looks like smooth. Um, yo, woo, there they go. And so what they do is that's one way they keep themselves warm is they have lots and lots of feathers and their feathers can actually trap air and the air is what keeps them warm. And then um, sometimes when they swim together, the air comes out of the feathers. Would you like to see some of these feathers? I've got some. So let's take a look over here and um, we'll look at some samples of feathers. So here we have a box of feathers. I'm going to try and brighten it just a little bit and change this and we'll zoom in too, okay? So we'll take a look here. So these are penguin feathers. Here we go. Ooh, whoa, that went really fast. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. What do you notice about these feathers here? Huh, you know what they remind me of? So they're zoomed in and I'm standing in front of it. I'll go back so you can actually see sort of how big they are, but they kind of look, you know what they kind of remind me of? They kind of remind me of like eyelashes. Do they kind of look like eyelashes to you? So it has this thick part in the middle and little plumes on either side. And what happens is when the plumes get wet, they sort of lay down like a really thick hair. Um, and so it actually is able, they have all these feathers, right, one right next to another, all on their skin. And in fact, it's so thick, they have so many feathers that their skin basically stays dry. So let's take a look here. Remember, just as a reminder, um, this is the size of my hand. So these we're zoomed way in here. And so each one of these feathers uh, is about, maybe about an inch long. Woo, it did it again, it zoomed way in. <laughs> so we can see uh, each of these feathers is about an inch long and it has a tiny, tiny little, um, like almost lash-like 
plumes on the outside of them. And those, that's actually what keeps our penguins warm. So penguins use their feathers to keep warm. They trap all that air in there. And that's why when they get really, uh, like get to go in really fast in the underwater, those, that air can't stay in their bubble or uh, stay in their feathers. And so it bubbles out. And that's why we were able to see all those bubbles trailing behind them. All right. So we talked a bit about penguins, a bunch about penguins. Here they are back in our June Keys penguin habitat. They have that great football shape. They have that strong bill, that fish eating bill, although Concha made a good point. Some of them do eat shrimp like organisms, shrimp like creatures. Um, they've got big, powerful wings. They've got this black and white coloration. But wait, that actually reminds me of something. Now, I do know that there's a question coming in, so I'm going to pause for just a moment. But let's think about this. I know that there's lots of penguins out there. Whoa, here they come. There's lots of penguins out there in the world. We saw some beautiful pictures of other types of penguins. But there's another bird that's out there that's kind of like penguins, but not quite like penguins. And we have them here at the aquarium. They're black and white too. And they actually, they have some things that are similar, but some things that are also kind of different. So I'm going to see if I can take this question and then maybe we'll transition. Um, oh. This is a great question, and it actually helps me transition our topic here. So I'm thinking of another kind of bird we happen to hear, have here at the aquarium. It's also black and white. It also is really good at swimming, but it looks a little bit different. Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side picture of two birds that I'm talking about here in just a moment. So. Um, we're going to look at a side-by-side -side picture. One is of a, peng of a penguin, and we talked a lot about penguins, but one is of a different kind of bird. Can you think of what bird that might be? Maybe can you predict it? Okay, so we'll take a look in just a moment when we get a chance. We're going to look at a side-by-side -side picture right here. Hmm. So here we have the penguin that we were talking about. This one is an Adelie penguin, but this just, it's got all the same things. That football shape, that black and white coloration, those strong, tough feet, those big, powerful wings that are good for swimming underwater. But this is also a black and white bird, but it looks kind of different. What do you notice? Yeah, you know the thing I noticed first about the puffin right here? This puffin has uh, different colors, so you can see. Do you think that, remember I said your beak says a lot about what you eat? Do you think that the puffins maybe eat a different way than pe uh, the penguins do? Yeah. And their beaks are really brightly colored. Huh. That's interesting. And they've kind of got different feet, too. First, these feet are very brightly colored. Yeah, there's a, a couple things that make them pretty different. Also, the head is a little bit bigger. Um, and we see that the body is a, a little less kind of stocky, right? That's really, really interesting. So maybe we'll take a look at some puffins here and talk about puffins for a change. Now, puffins right here ha look a little bit more like they have sort of, they, they don't stand just upright like penguins do. And in fact, um, a lot of times when they're on the beach, what do you notice? How are they sort of seated on the beach? Yeah, they're more likely to like lay down and sort of keep their head up. This almost reminds me kind of like of a duck, right? Like sort of this duck sitting shape, right? So slightly different shape. They're sitting on top of their feet. You can kind of see the feet right under them right there. Interesting. They still have that black and white coloration, but they live a really different lifestyle. They also have this brightly colored beak. Now their beak is used to eat fish also. Maybe, Allie, do we have a great picture of puffins using their beak? You can take a, a minute to find it, but um, they use their beaks in different ways. So we remember, of course, that our penguin had that long black bill, that long black beak. The puffins actually have this colorful beak, and it's actually one way that they attract uh, a mate. So they are the more colorful, brightly vivid beak um, usually indicates a healthier animal, and that is how they find a mate. Now here, this puffin is trying to catch as many fish as it can. And so it grabs lots and lots of fish all at once. 
was a little bit different than when we um, when we were looking at how we fed our penguins with eight, sort of like one big fish at a time. These guys will go down and catch lots and lots of fish and hold them all in their mouth. And that's because if you were to look at the inside of their beak, they even have like little hooks on the inside of their beak. I kind of think of it like Velcro inside of your mouth. Yeah, they actually have all these sticky um, little parts inside their beak that help them grab onto the slippery fish. And then they, they swallow them, which I think is kind of amazing. Now, let's think back to where penguins lived. Remember where penguins live? They live on the bottom half of the planet, right? It turns out puffins actually live on the top half, closer to the Arctic. And so they're sort of like, um, they're both cold water birds, but puffins like the top and penguins like the bottom of our planet. So here we have um, sort of a sketch of um, the areas where puffins will live in the green here, whereas penguins, as if we remember, live down on the bottom. So what do you notice if puffins are green and um, the penguin, all the penguin species, um, not just the Gen 2 or not just the, um, the Ma uh, Magellanics, I mean, it's all the types lived on below. Do they ever overlap? Do you see any areas where puffins and penguins, actually the blue and the green overlap? Nope, you don't. Huh, that's interesting. Well, let's think about it for a second. Remember, I said the one thing they have in common, uh, well, they have many things in common, but the, in terms of where they live, the puffins like cold water, the penguins like cold water. What's the water like in the middle of our planet at the equator? What's the weather like around the equator? You know what it makes me think of? One kind of weather, really. Do you think it's cold or hot there? It's hot. All the weather at the equator is hot. And it turns out the water is much warmer at the equator too. And so um, we just got a great question that was this. If puffins are north, which is true, and penguins are south, which we see here, will they ever meet? So what do you think? If puffins are north and penguins are south, so puffins are on the top, penguins are on the bottom, do they ever meet? No, they don't. So they don't overlap at all. And that's because this entire area in the middle is hot water. And uh, they don't like that warm, warm water. It's too hot for them. Remember how dense the penguin feathers were? They had so many feathers all together. It would be too hot for them to be to even swim through that really, really warm water. So they pretty much avoid it when they can. So that's why puffins and penguins actually never mix. So here at the aquarium, we don't actually mix them either. They live in separate habitats. Now, I will tell you, the one time that they might actually see each other is every once in a while we'll take a penguin for a walk just to give it something uh, interesting to look at inside. Um, and may maybe even then they might pass each other. Um, but that's really the only opportunity they have here at the aquarium. So great question. That was the other question that someone had. Do they ever meet? Um, and the answer is not really, not even here at the aquarium. So we can see puffins are up top and penguins are down below. But they're both cold water birds. They're both black and white. They eat fish. They might eat fish a little bit differently. Um, and they actually also have slightly different feet because puffins are, are good at diving, um, but they also fly. So take a look right here. Do you remember the penguin feet? They're kind of tough little muscular feet. What do you notice about puffin feet? What do they look like to you? Yeah, they kind of remind me of duck feet or like little paddles. Like if you've ever gone maybe bodyboarding or body surfing, maybe you put on little fins on your feet, right? Or maybe snorkeling or, or diving. Yeah, so they actually use those to sort of paddle. So um, when they swim underwater, they can dive, but sometimes they just hang out more like a duck does. And they just hang out at the surface right here and they paddle around with those big, flat, webbed feet. So this is a um, puffin there. This is also inside the same exhibit. So you see a puffin, it's kind of sleeping over here. Um, but these are very similar birds. These are actually uh, another diving bird called a guillemot. And there it goes swimming behind. You can see that they can fly. They flap a little bit differently than uh, penguins do. And then you can see their feet are behind them. So 
Um, they're pretty different here. They, once again, those are the guillemots there. Uh, but they, they have sort of a different lifestyle. It's almost like they hang out at the surface. They'll paddle with those big, big um, feet. Occasionally, they'll dive down to catch fish or other um, creatures. You know, they just dive down and then they go back up to the surface. So they sort of have a different body shape even um, compared to the penguins we talked about. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I really enjoyed your questions and hope that you have a great rest of your week. Um, and check out our uh, penguin cam if you get a chance. And I uh, hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.